Metz Ignited is the industry growth centre for mining equipment, technology and services. Australia's METS sector is a recognised world leader in innovation and technology, delivering the safety, environmental and productivity outcomes that sustain our global resources sector. The success of Australia's METS companies has created more highly skilled jobs and expanded the local economic contribution of Australia's leading technology sector. Hi, my name is Stefan Krober. I'm CEO and co-founder of Emerson's and it's a pleasure to be here today to share some thoughts on how we're enabling the digital mine of the future through autonomous underground data collection. So collecting data underground is, is really challenging. Um, many areas are hard to access. Um, the collection requires skilled staff. So obviously your uh, geotechs or surveys spend a lot of time underground instead of um, analyzing the data, they're collecting the data. These days as mines are becoming deeper, they're also subject to more seismicity and there are other challenges. So it's getting more and more hard to capture this data and to do the monitoring. Um, but paradoxically, as the mines get deeper, they need more um, monitoring because of these, these challenges and uh, additional hazards. So there's also a drive to obviously reduce the number of people underground um, and get people on the surface to, to avoid challenges. So there's this paradox of needing more data, but not being able to send people underground to, to capture um, the data and, and monitor the mine. So we really strongly believe that autonomous systems can play a key role in collecting data um, underground, even in these really challenging uh, conditions. With the digital mine of the future, we believe it's going to be possible to map the entire mine in a single day and do continuous monitoring, even in the most challenging parts of the mine that were previously not ac uh, accessible. Um, and this will be done through a combination of autonomous systems and IoT sensors. So this was the, the question and the challenge to the audience is to think about this mine of the future. And if you were going to be designing or planning a mine today um, with understanding that through the life of that mine, data capture would be ubiquitous and possible, um, how would you do things differently? How would you plan the mine differently and how would you operate the mine differently uh, with that in mind? And just to show that um, we're not there yet, but we're heading, heading in, the, in the right direction and, and getting close. This is an example of a mine in Greenland, which was mapped over a number of days, around three days, um, using a hover map system in a combination of ways. So using it on a drone, uh, mounted to a vehicle, carried as a handheld. And as you can see, in, in a relatively short period of time, um, almost the entire mine was being able to, to map, including hundreds of slopes um, and many kilometers of drives. So this has been enabled through Hovermap. This is our, our core product. Um, basically, it's a two-in-one system which is designed to automate drone flights, even in challenging environments. And while the drone is flying, it's also collecting accurate uh, spatial 3D data. Hovermap can also be removed from the drone and used as a handheld scanner. Um, have a quick release mechanism which allows it to be attached to various attachments on vehicles, uh, on a backpack in a protective cage to lower it down vertical shafts, uh, for example. This video just shows um, the process of uh, capturing the data and underground flying beyond line of sight. So first the drone is assembled, then half map is attached using our quick release mechanism. Power and signal cables are connected. Um, so we draw power from the drone's battery supply itself. And then once it's on the ground, um, we can turn it on and it starts producing a map before it even takes off. This is streamed to the operator's tablet and the operator can then start setting waypoints. These waypoints don't need, need to be precisely somewhere in the, the drive itself. They can be um, an arbitrary position and uh, operator taps on the tablet to launch the drone and then taps to initiate the mission. The drone then uh, navigates trying to reach the waypoint that was placed, but it's always scanning the environment, keeping itself safe, keeping itself off the walls of the drive. Um, while trying to reach this waypoint, which is placed somewhere up in the distance. Obviously, while it still has Wi-Fi connection back to the operator, it can stream um, the map and uh, the operator gets an update of, of what, what it's seeing. Um, once it goes beyond communication range and line of sight, uh, the, the system continues on this autonomous mission, trying to reach the waypoint, still capturing all that data on board. Um, and even if the pilot loses that link, it doesn't matter, the system will continue. Um, trying its best to reach the waypoint. So here you can see it's um, flown down the end of a drive, gone as far as it can, and now heading back to the operator. When it um, returns within communication link, operator can pause the flights and wait for the latest data to be downloaded to the tablet. So in this case, you can see the new data being downloaded and 
operator noticed there was a section off to the left that wasn't quite mapped. So a new waypoint is placed in that general direction. And then the system goes off to explore and, uh, and reach that waypoint. A quick fly through of the 3D point cloud. And you can see the level of detail that's captured um, just from 10 minutes flying um, in this area beyond line of sight. So an example of where this can be used, this is uh, a use case in LKAB's Karuna mine um, in Sweden. There was a seismic event which caused a significant fall of ground. So a large portion of the mine was um, uh, inaccessible. So they called in our partners in Sweden to use Hovermap to fly into these areas and map um, and assess the damage. So over a number of days, they scanned a few kilometers of drives and this was in, uh, instrumental in allowing them to determine whether it was safe to re-enter and the level of uh, rehabilitation that would be needed. It can also be used for convergence monitoring. This is a trial done at, um, at Argyle Mine uh, by Mine Geotech. So they scanned a number of uh, drives on, on the extraction level a few months apart and they're really sort of trying to determine if this type of data could replace the traditional extensometer. So they compared extensometer readings to hover map um, based readings. And they found that overall, um, the system was quicker to, to capture data, provided more coverage, um, sacrificed a moderate amount of precision compared to the uh, extensi extensometer, but there were these other advantages. And overall, the average difference <coughs> between the hover map readings and the extensi extensometer was around 2.1 millimeters. Once you have this data captured in drives, you can also uh, use it to map geotech structures, um, do over an underbreak analysis in drives and also do shotcrete thickness if you've got two scans before and after the shotcrete. Hover maps also really great uh, mapping slopes. Obviously, these are the areas where it's currently quite uh, challenging to map um, with the CMS because you know, the surveyor needs to approach the slope and, and be close to the, um, uh, the slope brow. With, uh, with the drone, it's possible to remain a safe distance from the slope brow and send the system in flying beyond line of sight just with a few taps um, on the tablet. And this is a cross section through a stope which is mapped and you can see the flight path. And then this video just gives an idea of some of the challenges um, that the system has to overcome when flying into stopes like this. So you can see it has to navigate its way through uh, some mesh. Um, it's now inside uh, the stope, trying to reach a waypoint which has been placed in the distance. Encounters uh, water pouring through a drill hole in the backs. Um, paused there for a while and then continues on its mission. Um, again, still trying to reach a waypoint uh, somewhere off in the distance, navigating uh, wires, chains, obviously keeping itself off the wall. You can see some more wire here. So in this video, you'll see uh, an, an animation of a uh, point cloud captured flying inside a stope, again, using our beyond line of sight capability. And again, you'll see the level of detail that's captured. Um, key benefits for stope mapping is the level of uh, coverage that's generated. So there's pretty much zero shadowing. Um, the point density allows uh, not just accurate volume estimates, but also geotech structure mapping. And a few more images just showing the level of detail that's uh, collected inside um, stopes. It can also be used to um, get inside draw points to inspect them. Um, if there's been a hang up, for example, and it's flying into a, a draw point of a block cave where there's a hang up, allowing the secondary brake crew to um, determine the best approach to uh, relieve the hangout. Vertical shafts also possible, um, either on the drone or using other techniques. So here's an example of the drone flying down an all pass, which is large enough to, to accommodate the drone, flying down a couple of hundred meters. And again, this can allow uh, measuring of overbreak and just assessing the condition of, of these vertical shafts. And in this case, our map was attached to our cage, um, protected cage and lowered down this all pass uh, on a cable. And again, you can see the level of detail that's captured, allowing um, to determine the level of overbreak. Um, an example of a raised bore, also possible to be scanned using the, the cable attachment. And something else that we've done uh, of interest recently is just to demonstrate the level of autonomy and what's possible in the future is to do a transcontinental remote flight. Um, so with the level of autonomy that we have on Hovermap, it's possible to operate it remotely. And as a proof of concept, we connected over the internet from Brisbane to a mine underground in Canada. And from my desk in Brisbane, I was able to operate the drone. So you can see I've, I've connected via 
standard um, internet collaboration tools. I've taken over control of a laptop underground, which is connected to Hovermap and also connected by internet um, back to Brisbane. And then using the interface, which is usually run on the operator's tablet, um, I ran that on the laptop and was able to set waypoints, um, initiate the takeoff of the drone, and then uh, send it on its way beyond line of sight. So all possible from another part of the world. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a snapshot of what's possible today and where we're heading in the future. And again, um, this uh, thought experiment of how would mines be planned and operated differently in the future, knowing that data could be easily captured um, uh, for routine monitoring. Thank you very much. And I encourage you to have a look at our video channel, the Mia channel, where you'll see some more information or visit our website and find out um, some more about how the map and how it's gonna help you in your underground operations. Thank you. Metz Ignited is the industry growth centre for mining equipment, technology and services. Australia's METS sector is a recognised world leader in innovation and technology, delivering the safety, environmental and productivity outcomes that sustain our global resources sector. The success of Australia's METS companies has created more highly skilled jobs and expanded the local economic contribution of Australia's leading technology sector.